Hello! In this short series of videos, I'm going to be showing you how to create a photorealistic Coke can in Blender. In this first video, we'll be just covering the modeling and texturing, lighting, rendering, all that good stuff will be covered in the following two videos. The modeling time for this should be about one to two hours. This is an intermediate tutorial. You will need some Blender knowledge to go through this as I will not be covering everything step by step. I'll be showing the broad strokes and then it'll be up to you to go through and repeat those throughout the model. Okay, so let's get started. Firstly, I'm gonna delete everything in my scene and then I'm gonna jump into one of these side views. I'm going to right click, then add a reference image. The first one is this can side image here. And I'm also going to add the can top image. So now these are both sitting in our scene. Now let's move these guys. I'm just going to move this one over to the side and the top view down to the bottom. This is just so we have some room to model. Okay, I'm going to right click again and uh, I'm going to add a cylinder to this scene. So this is going to be the base of our can. Jump into x-ray view so we can see the reference image below it. And now I'm just adjusting the cylinder so it fits to the bottom and the top of our reference image. So now I'm going to jump into edit mode and add in a few edge loops. These edge loops are going to help us adjust the cylinder to fit our reference more cleanly. We are only adding a few edge loops at this point, just enough that we can adjust it to the silhouette of the can. Feel free to start adding in some more geometry now. Some areas will require more than others, uh, just depends on where there's more detail. Now that we have the base of our can, we can start working on the top. So I'm going to select the top in edit mode, hit Shift D, Escape, then P, and just select Selection. Now let's rename these new objects. The first one will be Lid, and the second one will be Can. This is just to keep things organized so we know what everything is. Now I'm going to start scaling the lid on the top view to fit our reference image. So our main priority now is to match these patterns that we see on top of the can. So I'm going to extrude in the outer edge so I have a bit of geometry to work with. Now what I'm going to do now is just take this outer geometry and try to match it to some of these inside patterns. So you can see the first one I'm matching here is this sort of tiny line that goes across the top of the can. Now it doesn't matter uh, if you keep this asymmetrical or symmetrical at this point, uh, just as long as that you're matching up to these lines. So now I'm going to start using the knife tool to create the geometry in the middle here. Just going across, going from vertice to vertice, just to make sure we don't have a rogue massive face in the middle there. So now that we have some of these outer shapes done, we can start working on some of the inner ones. So this is the bit where the liquid comes out, the bit the tab actually opens when you push it up. So I've just extruded in a face and I'm just taking those vertices and matching them up and adding geometry where I need it. What we are doing here is just adding edges where the details on top of the can are. And this is going to be a guide for us to create the different bumps and things that sit on top. Now that I have this down here and you can see here, I've used the knife tool again to add in some edges across the way so I just don't have a rogue face sitting in the middle of everything. And then I'm going to select the outer edge and bevel it. Just making sure that those outer edges are sitting on the outside of this detail here. So you can see I'm adjusting to make sure that everything's in the right place. And once you've done that you can add an edge loop going all the way around and you should be able to translate this edge loop up to create that bump. So just go ahead and do that for the rest of them. Uh, you can see here I'm doing it for this small line here. Just to translate that up. And uh, finally for this larger one on the outside. So you can see once we've done all that, we now have a low poly version of those details sitting on top of the lid. So that looks pretty good. Now for this last divot at the top, I'm just going to go with the knife tool again and create those edges. There we go. And I'm just going to select all the faces and uh, extrude them in, in order to create uh, some more geometry to bring this down. Now that I have all those vertices in the right place, just after a few adjustments, 
We should be able to grab all those faces and translate them down. So now we have the top of the lid and we've got the dip at the top and all of the bumps at the bottom. It's looking a bit low poly though, so let's add a subdivision surface modifier. And I'm just going to bump that up to three or something. But unfortunately, once we add this, we can see we've got a bit of a problem. You can see that these details that we've created are sort of smoothing and fading off into the distance. So I'm just going to turn that off now and we're going to want to do some beveling to sharpen up those edges. So the more geometry you have in an area, the less smoothing that there will be, the sharper it will be. So you're going to see I'm grabbing this entire outer edge of this first detail and adding in a bevel here. Doing the same for this inner one. And then finally, I will be doing it for this smaller line detail out the side here. Now, once we smooth it again, we can see that these details are much more clear and they have sharper edges. That about does it for the lid, so I'm just going to hide it and uh, open up the can again here. So same technique as before, just going through and adding in some bevels, just for the areas I know will be sharper. You'll be able to see on the reference image where bits are a bit tighter and a bit sharper, and that's where you want to add the most geometry. So you can see the different areas of the can that I'm adding a few bevels to here. So I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier here, bump that up to three or something, same as last time, and you can see that the can is starting to look a bit smoother, a bit nicer, and a bit more like our reference. So now I'm going to take a look at the bottom of the can and just want to create that rounded bottom that these kinds of soda cans have. Then taking the knife tool, I'm going to jump in and uh, create some cuts so I don't have a rogue face sitting at the bottom. I think that about does it for the bottom of the can now that I've added a few more edge loops. So that's looking pretty good smooth. So this will be the last bit that we model in the can, it'll be that top rim. I'm just following along with some reference, extruding in the faces and bringing them down, bring them up making sure that I'm just matching that reference as close as possible. Then I'm going to grab my edge tool and uh, create a few more bevels because I want these bits to be extra sharp, as you can see based off the reference that I have here. Now we don't need this middle face anymore because we've already created the lid, so I'm just going to select it and go delete face. And then I can bring in my lid that I created before, so I'm just going to unhide that and uh, do some scaling and positioning in order to put this in the right place. So I'm just going to set the origin of the geometry to the center, scale it in. So with this kind of hard surface modeling, it's okay for us to keep these objects separate and just sort of put them next to each other. It won't show up on the final. I'm going to hide the lid and the can so we can go ahead and create the last object here. So I'm going to create a cylinder and scale that in so it sits neatly in this little circle on the tab. Then I'm going to select all of the bottom faces and delete them, so I'm left with just this round top face. I'm going to extrude it out, same technique as before, grabbing vertices, matching them to the edges, and making sure that everything's in the right place. This same technique can be used to create thousands and thousands of different types of models, just by adding in objects and extruding things out, adding in edge loops, and using reference can definitely help a huge amount. So you can see I'm getting to the bottom and I'm just matching up that bottom curve here, adding in geometry where I need it. And that's looking pretty good to me. So I'm just going to select the whole thing and extrude it out to give it some volume. Then I'm going to take this entire outer edge and those inner edges and bevel them to round it all out. And then I'm just going to add a subdivision modifier. Now for bonus points, you can use the same technique that we used on the lid of the can to create the little details that you see on these kinds of tabs, just the two little divots at the top, and there's also a little divot at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and create those. It's the same thing as before, selecting the edges, giving them a quick bevel, and uh, placing them in there. We are almost there at this point. I just have to create one more object, which is the little nail that holds down the tab. I'm just going to use a cylinder with uh, some rounded out edges, give it a bit of a smooth, and then place it on top of the tab. Now we can take both these objects, unhide our lid and can, and uh, scale this in and place it down until it looks like it's in the right spot. 
So that about does it for the modeling on this Coke can. In the next video, I'll show you how to UV unwrap it and how to add some textures. And then in the final video, I'll show you how to add some condensation and also add in some lighting.